Hello everyone, welcome to lesson two of week seven and today we're going to be focusing on the principles of training and again the, the command word explain. So I'm saying think back here but really you've probably all just completed this lesson so we've just learned about the principles of effective practice again and because that's revision we did do that as part of our coursework and those were goal setting, progression, model performers, tedium and work to rest ratio remembering that as the GPs are only open on the Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So today we're looking at the principles of training. This is another set of principles that we only use for one specific thing. And these principles are the principles of training, which are S, P, O, R, T. And these are only for fitness, physical factors. So physical fitness factors for no other factors. Every other factor we use the principles of effective practice because we practice these things. But for physical fitness, we train them. So we use S, P, O, R, T. So to ensure our fitness improves, so physical factors that are fitness related, for example, our agility, speed or flexibility only um, in this course is we must consider the principles of training. These are specificity for the S, progressive overload for the P and the O, reversibility for the I and T for tedium. Let's look more into them now. So what are these principles? What do they mean in each part of the letter? So S stands for specificity, and that means training must be matched to the needs of the sporting activity and the performer, so as to improve the factor impacting on performance. So it has to be really specific to you and your needs. Otherwise, it's either gonna to be too hard or too easy, and it's not gonna work for you. It has to be specific to your needs. The P and the O stands for progressive overload, and that comes together. So training should always be moving forward so that once you hit a target or reach a goal or if boredom starts to set in, it is time to adjust the program and make it slightly harder. The more regular and challenging the training is, the better the performer becomes. So you must gradually increase the frequency, intensity and duration. R stands for reversibility. If you have to take any time off during um, a physical fitness training program or through injury or it's a holiday or something like that, time off must be considered. It will be unlikely that the performance levels will go into reverse should a performer have to take a week off after a difficult tour or competition, but you should really always consider that. So if you're progressing through and making your training harder and you miss maybe a week of training, you probably shouldn't progress the next week. You should probably go back to where you were the week before you had the week off. So that's what I mean, the reversibility means. And tedium uh, is the same as the principles of effective practice in that you should ensure that your training avoids becoming boring. Okay. So why have you got to consider S-P-O-R-T, sport, the principles of training, when you're training fitness? And it's like the principles of effective practice because otherwise you might get a bit, either bored, injured or tired. All of this would lead to a lack of improvement. So here's your model answer for using that because you know what you've got to do now with these um, principles. But here's your model answer for explaining it. So explain how you use the principles of training to plan your PDP program for agility or it could be flexibility or it could be uh, speed. So your point would be when planning my physical fitness PDP, I would make sure it was specific. That's the first letter of these principles. The example would be, so I'd make it specific to my needs alone. No one else's. It has to be relevant to my levels of fitness and ability. The explanation for that is meaning your fitness, your agility or your speed or your flexibility will actually improve without injury, tiredness or boredom. So you've got all of the bit there. And that's just for that one. You don't necessarily have injury, tiredness, boredom for all of them. Select the right one. So using that, moving on to the next slide. It's task time for you. And the question again is explain what you would consider when planning a training program. And this is only for three marks um, because you've already done S. So you're going to cover PO, which is together progressive overload, reversibility and tedium. And you're going to give me three PEEs. OK, so you're going to use three P chains to explain why you'd consider progressive overload, reversibility and tedium. And remember, it's all to avoid bit, but you've got to select the right bits to go in your explanation and give an example as well. So use the, all of the learning you've done today to complete this on a piece of paper. Make sure you do it because you're going to need it.